Welcome home, everyone. Thank you for joining in on this episode of Welcome Home with the Katinas. Welcome Home is a podcast where I, your host Josh, sit down for a conversation with different people who I admire and discuss whatever's on their mind, and especially focus on life at home in times like this. Wherever you are and however you're listening, thank you for your support, and once again, welcome home. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining in on this week's episode of Welcome Home with the Katinas. Happy spring to everyone listening here in Franklin. We're recording this on a Wednesday morning, um, or Tuesday morning, sorry, and we're in anticipation of our first real spring storm. I guess we're under tornado watch or something right now, so we're going to record this and then run to our homes to be safe, but I want to say thank you to all of you who take the time to listen to these and um, watch these and, and let you know that our financial partners, those of you who give to us every month, uh, you're the reason we're able to do this. So thank you for that. Um, and thank we you. are blessed today with a special surprise guest, yes. Miss Courtney Joy Katina. Courtney, thank, thank you, you for, for being here. Yes, thank you for having me. I uh, You've been on the show before, but have you been on it in this format? I don't think so, not so yet. So it's probably been well over a year since the last yeah. time you were a guest on the show and um i told all the uncles make sure you guys show up for the podcast today we have a special <laughs> surprise guest and they were all excited yes. when they saw it was you court so thank you for being here and um i guess since it's been a, a little bit since you've been on the show could you just introduce yourself to our listeners tell us who you are yep you know the drill yeah, yeah. well like josh said i'm courtney i'm sam's youngest daughter yes. <laughs> um i live in uh, nashville tennessee in the city and uh i do the katina social media yeah you do a lot more than that of yes. course yeah yes if she's, you guys look she's modest if you guys look here at this uh beautiful banner we have courtney made that about 30 minutes ago um, making our po- podcast look legit yes now, man. very talented so cool. A uh, young lady and court today when when an hour ago when we decided you were going to be a guest on right. the show um i was thinking it, this this would be a cool thing to ask you about because i know nothing about graphic design mm-hmm. very little about like video editing and stuff um and anytime I'm think I have a need in that area, you're the person mm-hmm. I call. And so I'm just curious. I would love to hear the story from you. How did you get into developing this skill and talent that you have? What's the story behind that? Yeah. Um, in high school, they had like different focuses, and mine was digital design. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And then I think I was just always interested in photography and just the creative side of editing what, what kind of stuff are you doing in high school classes for uh it's mostly like photoshop like adobe and so we just learned like a bunch of skills but i didn't really use it like i would i did ywam after school okay and then in 2018 that's when i started working for you guys so it's been a couple years were the katinas your first client i think so yeah yeah because i still remember i remember texting uncle james and just asking him, like, if you ever need any help. And then the next day, I was the manager of <laughs> social Overall media. of social media, Courtney yeah. Katina. That's awesome, Court. Well, I, I'll ask, um, I guess I'll start with Uncle Yeti because uh, you're a proud father, Uncle. Yes. Um, what's it like having getting to work with your daughter? Wow. Your daughters, I guess, because wow. you have two. Yeah, that's a... A really good question. I think it's one that um, all of us brothers have pondered, you know, what what it's like to work with our kids. And um, it's been quite a a learning curve for us, man, just to um, understand and and see how we can, uh, you know, put longevity to our relationship with with our our working relationship with our kids. you guys have uh, have brought so much uh, more 
to to the platform and to to the ministry uh, that we couldn't even imagine. And uh, just getting ideas from you all, um, it's been amazing. I'm I'm so proud of uh, Court. I think it, it it was a learning thing for Court too because um, start putting stuff out on Instagram and the different platforms, and um, you know to try to make us. Uh, as appealing as we can be, but then I remember having a conversation with Court and saying, okay, Court, uh, we are in our 40s and our 50s, <laughs> so, uh, you know, be sensitive <laughs> to that. And, I mean, you, you can speak on this, Court. It's, it's probably been a, a, a learning, um, you know, a, a learning experience for you, too, to, because you're also working for um, Sing Master, Mastering, and which it, it's a mastering lab that works with tons of artists, mainly uh, mainstream artists, a lot of big names. And so you're doing stuff for them. And uh, those are completely different audiences. And so while you're trying to make things, um, you know, uh, productive for, 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 for them and their audiences, and then you come over to the Katinas where you know, we, we, we play in a lot of churches, and and so you're having to make adjustments there. But, uh, but man, I, I, I got to say, everything that I've, I've seen, I, I just see a lot of improvement, and uh, and we're, we're really grateful for that. Yeah, I, I enjoy getting to work with my cousins, and Courtney, you're one of those. And um, there's some, there's definitely challenges that come with working with family, but there's, a, I, the pros definitely outweigh the cons for me, at least. And, um I have a fun question for you, Court, and really this is for, I'll ask each of you guys this, but my question is, is there an artist or a creator or really anything out there that like, that's, that's like your dream, like, oh, I want to make an album cover for this, or I want to shoot a music video for this artist, or maybe it's something besides music. Is there, is there an, uh, a person out there that's like a dream uh, project for you? I'm trying to think of like not a basic answer. Like any any well, answer that's true is well, good. Well, there's this guy. I mean, the first person that comes to mind is obviously I would love to work with Beyonce. Mm. Of just like not even just see how she works, mm. like just behind the scenes. But another creator that I love, his name's Cole Bennett, and he, um, I think he's like. He does a lot of video, like he's done stuff for like Lil Yachty and Jack Harlow. Okay. Um, you'd probably recognize some of his I stuff. I feel like I've heard his name before. Yeah. Is he Chance? To, is he related to Chance the Rapper? I don't think so. No? Okay. He's white. Okay. I mean, not that he could have, but, <laughs> <No, he's not. laughs> but he... Well, it just, is 2024. <laughs> <laughs> they could be related. Yeah, but he, he's getting into like production now. Like now he has an album and like oh. Eminem, a bunch of people have... We're on the album, but he does a lot of like editing and oh, cool. just a bunch of creative stuff. Nice. Yeah. I like that. Uncles, this is for you. Artists, it doesn't even have to be music, but yeah. is there a dream person you guys would like to work with? Well, man, I was always, um, and still am, and he's, he's no longer here, but you know, uh, Michael Jackson was such a, a trendsetter back in the day. And it's, I think it's, it's really cool that even, um, a lot of younger uh, creatives uh, always talk about his the inspiration that he's had on a, a younger generation. Um, we did get to work and became friends with um, someone that we always uh, we felt like he was a, a musical idol, uh, Andre Crouch, and his. Uh, I'll just say one thing about him. He had this uh, canning ability to uh, just have uh, diversity was such a big part of his, um, the way he created his music. I don't know if that was intentional. I, I would say it was intentional. And I think it um, really inspired us uh, through the years just to just make sure that we weren't, you know, you know, uh, and not to be uh, not... Uh, we just made sure that we were still genuine with w the gift that God gave us. But we just, there was such an appeal for us to be relatable to 
very different mm -hmm. crowds and demographic demographics without you know people being confused I mean we're still who we are um, and there's still a lot of growth to to um, to have in that area but I love artists and people who have a mass appeal who are diverse mm -hmm. in uh, just their approach with being cre you know creative mm -hmm. I'm like you John um, but three three artists come to mind for, for me um, one is you uh, two uh, the band you two that have uh, they've been around for decades now, and um, and when I say they've been around, uh, they weren't just like on the fringes. They're they're always at the top of their game, and uh, I I really respect that because um, to be at the top, you have to change. So you can't just be on the top and say, well, this is what brought me at the top, and this is what I'm going to do. There's 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 nuances and just this this minute changes that that people on the outside may maybe not recognize, but you two as a band, Bono the singer, man, I just saw something uh, with them at that that new uh, venue in Vegas, the Sphere, and they were just as effective as ever, and it, it it's 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 crazy. So that that's the well, first one. I, I think it's interesting that you bring them up because I wasn't. I'm a little surprised that you say you too, Uncle. But I, one thing I know about you two is that to them, the live show is really important to Bono and the whole band. Like they put a lot of emphasis. They don't do they don't do live shows unless it's excellent. And like I know it took them over two years to put together the show that they're doing in Vegas. Yeah. Be the tour before was called the 360 tour. Do you guys remember that? Yes. It was a stadium tour where mm -hmm. the sta the stage was in the middle. Mm -hmm. It was a 360 degree show. The live show was a huge part of U2. And I think that it's interesting that I would think you guys would agree that the live show has sustained the Katinas for as long as you guys have been doing music. And I just think it's interesting that you two is one of those people because I think you guys are kindred spirits in that aspect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. Thanks. Thank that's a that's a compliment. Appreciate that. So you two. Um, but another guy that I look at and <laughs> this might surprise some people, but Toby Mac. Mm -hmm. Toby Mac is a guy that because uh, we we came into the industry together right around the year 96 and um, right. 90s uh, when, when we did the, our first record with uh, even uh, before that I well, think it was early yeah 90 yeah yeah, yeah. but I mean I I feel, I feel like we we always felt like peers cuz uh, DC Talk came out but um you know after DC Talk uh when Toby did his solo thing I, I watched him just from the from the from the back you, you know the background just just seeing him uh, from a distance um seeing him change and and uh he always put music out that was that sounded current it's like this is the new thing and and um so i really appreciate that about him i mean he's he's older than all of us but he's still on stage he's still effective in what he does and then the last guy i want to mention is michael w smith mm. michael w smith um i i, I think i feel like i want to be connected to him and and god is given us the opportunity to, to do some tours with him and to learn from him. But uh, the kind of family man that he is, and the kind of man that he is off of the stage really, really speaks to me. But I, I think in all three of these these artists, it's, uh, well, it's longevity. Yeah. It's like, how, how can you do this long? You know, and, I, and, and you know, there, there are some who've had um, shorter careers but have been just as effective. And I, 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 I uh, respect that, yeah. too. Uh, but those are the three bands that uh, I, come I, to mind. I agree, Jetty. Um, and I want to say that with Courtney, um, man, coming along um, and being a part of our team, I'm so proud of her. But one of the, the cool things that she's <clears throat> done is um, just help us to, to stay relevant um, without – you know, just saying, hey, just whatever you guys used to do, don't do that anymore. Do this. <laughs> but really bringing us along. And uh, I think uh, Sam made uh, a comment just about uh, it's a learn. It's been a learning curve for us. And I'd say 2020 was that kind of that pivotal moment mm -hmm. where we were kind of forced to 
um, one, go go to the people and use the internet to um, create content, uh, to start streaming uh, our music. And Courtney, uh, Eli, Josh, Caitlin, so many of, of you really helped us to, to say, listen, you can still be who you are, um, but even reach more people. And I think it's important for, I wanna say to um, people who are still creating music or in the arts, who are getting up in age, that perhaps um, getting some some young minds, some young energy in your camp is is what you need to if if you want to keep doing this, if you don't want to close shop. And I think that's what we've had to, because it's a you know it was it was kind of uh, awkward. It was a different thing because we we normally just it's just the five of us doing what we do. And um, so I'm I'm thankful. I think the silver lining of 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 the pandemic and you know live shows being canceled for for a while was for us to say all right you got to do something different if you want to not just keep doing this but even grow i feel i feel like in the last three and a half four years there's been some growth and a lot of that was due to us realizing that man we need some some young minds some amazing creatives and they happen to be you know right in our camp and we didn't know it and that's been a, a huge blessing there, there's a uh, the the artist who won the Grammy this year for rap album of, of the year. His name's Killer Mike, mm. and as far as I know, he'd never won a Grammy before. He's wow. well into his forties, which amazing. is when you think of rap and hip hop, you think of like it, I think of like oh, that's the music of the young yeah. generation. I think it's uh, amazing that that's someone amazing. in his at his age is resonating in one rap album of the year. And I don't know a lot about Killer Mike, but I have to imagine he had, he has a team around him that is helping him to um, kind of, like you said, main maintain relevancy. And cause he's, it's not like he just started rapping. He's been doing it for 20 some years, maybe longer. And now he won a Grammy in his forties for rap album of the year. I think that's amazing. Yeah. And, um, but yeah. Well, I, I wanted to say, um, tw John mentioned 2020 when we, you know, it was the year of the pandemic. And so we were forced to do a lot of things that we don't normally do. Um, and uh, so Courtney coming on board with the whole, the visuals and, and uh, the social media thing is, and then Josh, that was the, when you taught me uh, how to use logic. Um, it's the program that I use to build our stems. And uh, if it wasn't for that, I mean, I don't know about you guys, Joe and, and, and John, but uh, man, I, I just, I feel like that changed. It, that, that was uh, when things changed because I didn't have to wait for, you know, other guys that used to help us with the stems. And so, and, and a lot of, um, I, I think that there, some, some people in my generation and even the older generation, they can be afraid of technology, but, um, I think the millennials come in and, and they, they show us how, um, it, it's like a language that they speak uh, effortlessly, uh, but, but, but uh, old dogs can learn new tricks <laughs> sometimes and, and, and we're, we're, we're better for it. So um, yeah, I'm grateful for yeah. that. Dad, one artist, two artists, who would you like to work Man, with? Man, I think uncles covered that. Uh, I was trying to think something different, and I'll be honest, I can't really think. I think right now the season that I'm in is, uh, and I think it's appropriate that Court's here, I'm just trying to, uh, I'm, tr I'm dreaming about how we can just be better, do this better as a family. Um, what we do is different, and again, I don't, I don't, that doesn't mean that what other people do is not relevant to what we do, because it is. I think of all the artists that the uncles mentioned, Smitty, Toby, U2, uh, Michael Jackson, Andre Crouch, those, by, those guys have influenced us. Uh, but this last weekend, we got to, you know, when we were leading worship, we had some of the nieces and daughters join us. And that was just a taste. And again, I, I think I'm, I'm looking back since Court and you and Eli, and I guess Eli was the first one and Kate started working with us. 
I feel like I can proudly say we didn't force anybody to work with. Like we didn't. Hey, we you got to work with us. In fact, I think if anything, we probably swung to the other extreme because of how we grew up, and we didn't have a choice. Um, and again, I'm grateful to Grandpa, and you know, we and this is all we knew how to do. We had to do this. We had to depend on one another. So I look at how Eli, Court, Kate, you, BG came in to work with us I think it was all I believe it was all mutual like okay do we want to do this can we do this and we're still learning still growing and the 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 we the girls uh, the nieces and daughters sang with us just one song and man you know I don't know if it's just my state of mind or my the state of my soul I it was so refreshing uh and again as I we mentioned to the nieces hey I don't know if we'll do this again, but this it was beautiful. And hopefully we can do it with hopefully uh, our kids that want to come alongside of us will continue to have that opportunity and we'll continue to have the creativity and the stage to be able to do that even stronger and better in the, in the coming years. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, yeah. that's good. I, I was thinking too, Joe, that, um, um, you know, along with generations working together. I mean, I, I think about our, our vision to, to gather people, to welcome people in, into the family. And um, really prior to uh, Court and Kate working with us, we hadn't had a lot of experience uh, working with females, right? And so, um, and man, the perspective that females bring is just, uh, you can't, um, you know, you can't uh, substitute it with, with it, it's just, and it, I, I really feel like it's the way that God created us, man, male and female. And so, uh, and then <laughs> listening to, um, to ESPN radio this morning, and they talked about how the women's college game is, uh, is kind of like, it, it, it's 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 more hype than th this year than than the than the men and and I, I mean I watched both games last night and and uh, man I, being a girl dad you know I'm just I'm I'm proud and I just I, I know that uh, the the voices of, of females is is crucial and yeah. is is so important. So good. I love that, Uncle. I I also watched um, I watched the first. Uh, game last night, the Iowa versus LSU game, um, and I'm a, I don't know how many f women's basketball games I've watched, like, f beginning to end, it's not that many, but I was invested into the game mm -hmm. last night, and I was, uh, I feel like being a basketball fan for years now, there has been this um, effort being made to kind of promote the women's game, right? And for one reason or another, it seems like it, it's hard. To, it's been hard to catch on, but something does feel a little different. Mm -hmm. And I've, it's fun watching the game for me because I do. It is a different game than the men's game. I don't think there's. It is different, but yeah. there's something um, I enjoy watching, like women compete. Uh, there's something different about it that's refreshing to mm -hmm. me, and I really enjoyed uh, yeah. watching them battle last night. And, yeah, um, we were on our thread talking <laughs> about get this Caitlin Clark girl is bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, well, uh, I got to, I got to, and James, <clears throat> Uncle James as well. We got to see um, a niece of ours, uh, Tahina Papa, who plays for uh, South Carolina. Um, they're the actual overall number one seed in, in the tournament. They're still undefeated. But you're right, Josh. I mean, the the uh, the place was packed, and and their their coach is is kind of is, is an icon in women's basketball. But it's it's really great to see just how they're elevating, not just basket women's basketball, but just women's sports in general. I want to ask um, Courtney. Um, I gotta have a question for you. I mean, you you you're so talented and gifted. You do various things because you're gifted um what is like one thing you can call it a go or a dream something that you haven't done yet 
that you would like to do um, soon? That is a hard question, but a good question. Um, I don't know. Like, I feel like I'm very, which I have the Lord to thank in my family, but I feel like in this season, I'm very content with what I'm doing. And I think, like, maybe the first time I was on the podcast, I was just wrestling, like, back and forth. Like, am I going to do this? Like, is this going to be sustainable for me? Am I going to still live in Nashville? But now looking back, and that's been, like, two years, I feel like I can't see myself doing anything else. So I think um, a dream just getting better at what I'm doing and um, learning more from other people and um, I think just having more accounts. But, yeah, I don't have, like, one big goal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I love that answer, Corey. So last night I had this – I was not planning on talking about this, but Alexis and I, we have this sushi place here in Franklin that we go to at least once a week. It's called Sunset Sushi. And the, Shout out, Tony. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the owner of the sushi shop, his name's Tony. He's, Can I say something about yeah, Tony? Yeah. He always calls me either Joe or Sam. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, come on, man. I, I support you, man. You don't know my name. So Tony, <laughs> it's funny. Tony even asked, you talk to... You talked to Sam lately? Yeah. Last night he said that. But I, me and Alexis, we sat at the bar. So we're right, Tony's right across from us making the sushi. And I was just thinking about this man who I really don't, I don't know him personally, but I see him at least once a week and he's always very friendly. He knows my name. Um, he knows my order. <laughs> I was just thinking about his life because he seems to me to be a very content person. And... What I know about him, the little I know about him, is that Tony shows up to work every day. He has a gift for making sushi. He makes sushi. He's he's friendly with his customers. Um, he has relationships with his customers. And he seems to be content to me. And I feel like maybe it's just the season of life that I'm in right now, being you know, in my 20s. I still have a lot of goals and dreams that I'm chasing after. I do think that there's plenty of times in my life where I could be content and I could be satisfied if I would just be thankful for the thing that's in front of me and be diligent at the th- for the thing that's in front of me. And I learned that si- sitting in front of Tony last night mm. that this guy, he, again, I don't know him personally, but um, his spirit is so joyful and content and I know that he spends every day working hard and and doing what he knows to do and sometimes that's all it takes to be content and so I love that answer from you Courtney sometimes um, people ask what's your dream and maybe we are already living the dream Um, I think that's a court very such a healthy place and I don't I don't I'm sure we don't live there hope the goal is to live there with contentment it comes and goes, but I think especially at your age, yeah. where you're at in life, single, working, plenty of jobs, plenty of opportunity, but and so I, to be content, I, I think is a very, I guess I would encourage you as your uncle, man, hold on to that. Because there's going to be times where, it, oh man, I'm not content. I, I mean, 54, and I do find that I'm trying to be more content. And for me personally, it comes from being present and and not being distracted with what everyone else is doing. Cause I I I uh, I do have that gene in me where, oh oh, comparison or I'm not doing enough or if I'm doing great until I find out what somebody else is doing. Oh, maybe we how do we get on that stage? How do we do that? And nothing wrong with goals, but man, there's something beautiful about learning to live in the present and being content. And I, I do believe that it's Jesus's will for us to, to have that. That's the, uh, the rule and not the exception. Good word. I think uh, one of the uh, enemies of contentment is, and you mentioned it, comparison. 
you know, uh, scrolling through social media and going, man, oh man, look what that guy has, or look, wh look where they went, look what he's wearing, all of that, and, and we can just miss, like Josh said, the thing that's in front of us. I mean, this is last Sunday being at World Outreach. This church has been a tremendous blessing to us, giving us a platform to sing on, and, um, and there are so many. And then after, after the Easter service at World Outreach, we came to the park with, with all the family there. We had 73 people there at, at, wow. at uh, the, the, the park. But Growing. It was, yeah, and it was just seeing all the kids, the different ages, and, and, uh, and just being content mm. and, 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 and saying, man, thank you, God, for, for what you've done. You, you continue to grow this family. But just us being together, that was kind of a message that we all share with one another. And the message is, I love to be with you. you know, I love, and, and again, uh, the vision of the Katinas is to invite people mm. in the spiritual family, um, all generations. And then, and then there's things that the men do, and, and God called the men to do. There's things that the women do. God called the, the women to do that. So if we all... Um, just continue to learn what our lane is, where God is calling us, and and then be content with that, and be grateful that man, He's given us purpose. You know, that's what it's about. One of my favorite artists, his name's J. Cole. In 2016, he came out with this project called "Revenge of the Dreamers," mm -hmm. and uh, there's a song on there. The first lyric is. You ain't a man until you stop chasing your friends. Mm -hmm. And I remember hearing that song when I, in 2016, I would have been 20 years old. And I was definitely chasing my friends. That comparison that yeah. you talked about, Dad and Uncle Yeti, um, is something that I struggle with. And now, almost eight years later, I think to myself, am I chasing my friends? And if I'm honest... I think the answer is yes in a lot of areas of my life. And that lyric is, uh, it has stuck with me in th throughout the years of like, am I compa is comparison ruling my life? Am I chasing what Eli and Jackson and Dylan are doing? Am I chasing what so-and-so who I went to high school with? Or am I, um, the next line is think for, your, think for yourself, make your own plans. And um, that's something that I struggle with, if I'm being really honest. And um, this conversation is, is just a reminder to me that you ain't a man until you stop chasing your friends. And so um, you guys are men that I really look up to and court a woman that I look up to. And um, I think we're at our fullest when we're not chasing yeah. others, but we're thinking for ourselves, making our own plans. So I love that. Yeah. The struggle. So, hey, I think it's necessary, though, Josh. I think um, some days I'm chasing, some days I'm content. I do feel like late, I'm less, I'm less struggling, but some of that has to do with age and time. Uh, on the Easter, Uncle Yeti was talking about Easter. Man, I remember I had a moment. I was walking Josiah in his uh, trying to put him to sleep, and I saw all you guys playing games. Just the, I felt the joy just through the noise, and man, I remember when we were when I was your age, and I first of all we were hardly home on Easter. I mean, Easter was a big work day. Uh, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. I remember trying to have Easter egg hunts with you guys when we were like either the Monday we got back or the Saturday before we left, and then when I was walking Josiah and I saw you guys, I felt like I thought. This is what I struggled for. This is why we worked hard. Is so someday our the Josiah you got you used to be Josiah and that we wouldn't have to just be away. We could see you guys and now you're raising Josiah and Shiloh to come and Caitlin and Jervon's baby to come and it's your time to struggle. Uh but there will be a there will come a day of beautiful contentment um, when you're gonna hear you're gonna walk be walking your your grandson and watching your kids play and with their it's I can't tell you 
the amazing thing about it. And yet, immediately after I'm leaving, going home, the struggle comes back. Oh, man, what do I got to do this week? And it was like, dude, just be content with this. It was beautiful. I love that. I love that, Joe, and I love that word, joy. Um, that's your middle name, yeah. Courtney. <laughs> and you know what? I want to bring it back to you because I feel like when you, you talked about, man, just being in a season of contentment, um, that's where that, that, that joy comes from. Um, and I believe that because you exude that in everything that you do, um, you're, I mean, you're going to have to say no to accounts. They're going to be coming left and right. And they're just, you know, you know, um, it, that joy, that's a place when it, when I get to a, a place of contentment is when I feel joy the most. Uh, and I'll say that it's not, it's not like 24 seven, but I think, um, that day, uh, Easter Sunday was a reminder of, man, what it really is about. And Shelly and I were talking about, man, you, Whatever you guys have to do, you gotta. This got this has to be an annual thing, you know. Even yeah. if it's just a couple times through the year, because it serves as a reminder of why we exist. Um, yes, we uh, God has given us a platform where it's it's uh, we're visible in front of a lot of people, and and maybe most people don't make their living doing this kind of thing, but. At the end of the day, we can't miss out and we can't forget, um, you know, a three hour moment like we had. Uh, I think it's the last couple of years we've done this. Um, shout out to Kathy Ann for, I mean, that's her gift. She was just operating in what, I mean, as, as long as I, I've known your mom, that's her, her gift to bring people together is, um, is amazing. And I think, uh, I hope more more extended families and people get to experience, you know, what we experience on Sunday. Yeah. Uncle Yeti, as we close, there's a tradition on the show that you started actually years ago where um, we don't do this every week, but you shared a story about an, an idol that you met yourself that told you, he gave you a word of advice and he said, always leave people with an encouraging word. And so I'd like to ask you if you would leave us with an encouraging word for your lovely daughter, Courtney, as we close today. Thank you, Josh. And thanks for that opportunity. I, I do want to say that Courtney being the youngest, you know, I think the younger siblings in every home can, can relate to, um, you know, the pros and cons of that. And maybe even sometimes insecurities that go through your mind uh, being the youngest, but Court, you have shown um, so much purpose. You know, you talk about um, the digital design uh, class that you took in high school even, but even, you, you, I, I saw uh, creativity in you even before that. And uh, I would just say, man, um, the, the thing that makes me, brings me most joy is just hearing you uh, say that uh, you experience contentment. Contentment, I, I think, can be tied to purpose. You know, people that um, kind of lack contentment, sometimes they're asking themselves, what is my purpose? And, uh, and you've, you've uh, I, I think those, those years that you, or the year uh, in, in Hawaii, at YWAM, I think you, that was very uh, pivotal in your life, um, just the way that you learned to connect with God. And so I just want to say that, uh, I'm proud of you, and I, 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 the best is, is yet to come. And uh, I mean, you're already working with Beyonce, uh, you know, uh, through the mastering uh, uh, lab, and, and so I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of the younger sister that you've been to your older sisters. You've been uh, uh, respectful and honoring to them, but at the same time, uh, you kind of know where your place is too, and when to use your voice. and. And I'm so proud of you. And uh, to the listeners out there, you have purpose. And, um, and nobody can tell you if it's small or big. If it's something that God has placed on your heart, man, that purpose is going to ultimately take you to a place of contentment. Thanks, Uncle. So Court, good. thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. 
To those of you listening, thank you for tuning in. We'll be back with more episodes soon. Have a great day.